Okay, now Alistair McGowan has been on a road trip of his own, looking at different accents from all around the UK. On his latest journey, he goes in search of cockney, but didn't find it where you might expect him to. The East End of London is home to an accent that's famous all over the world. The East End has given us film stars like Michael Caine. Same stars like Dodd Cotton. Footballers like uh, David Beckham. Uh, style icons like uh, David Beckham. Uh, underwear models like uh, David Beckham. But the Cockney accent is now under threat from a new kid on the block. Accent expert David Hornsby knows all about it. So, David, here we are in the heart of the Cockney East End of London, but we're not going to be hearing that much Cockney today, are we? Is that right? No, we're going to be hearing the new accent of the East End. It's called MLE, or Multicultural London English. No, you're telling me pork your pies. No, straight up. Straight up? Right, we better scarper. MLE is the voice of young London. Visually from Stratford, and I've been hackney for about 11 years now. When I was little, because I never used to go out, I used to talk quite cockney about my mum and dad. And then when I started going out and like mixing with other people, and then I have that youth dialogue that they say now. Listening to the way that you're talking, it's it's like I know it's because it's casual and it will actually record dude that. But it's like <laughs> it's like it's going through the back of the mouth. How we speak now, it's just more relaxed. That was an interesting sound as well, the way we speak now. <laughs> yeah. It's very different from nah. Yeah. Yeah. MLE is spoken by people from all ethnic backgrounds, and its influences are also multicultural. It's a mix of sounds from places as diverse as the Caribbean, Greece, Asia and Africa. One difference I'm hearing is that I would have expected like, the epi emmers, like West Ham, yeah. for there not to be H's. No, nope. H droppings on its way out. Hackney, you said you're from Hackney. Yes. H's are back. Yeah. Let's Sorry. celebrate the H. Mm. H's are back, everybody. Mm. <laughs> the speed of MLE's progress is astonishing. Charlie speaks MLE, but his mum is Cockney through and through. How, for instance, would you say something like, they all have a different style of talking, don't they? They all have a different style of talking, don't they? Charlie? But they've all got a different style of talking, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they don't finish the words when they're talking, so you have to try and pick up what they're saying, and we, that's what I feel we have to do nowadays. The fact that it's changed so much within one generation it's quite extraordinary and almost alarming, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't say alarming, I'd say it's exciting. What really surprises me, though, is, is that the, the shape of the mouth to produce that accent has changed so much. The whole thing has gone from the front of the mouth, like when Debbie talks, to the back of the mouth when Charlie talks, and that is quite extraordinary, isn't it? A lot of Cockney vowels are diphthonged. The tongue has to go on a little journey, whereas multicultural London English vowels are much more likely to be monothonged, so you keep your tongue still. So play becomes blee. I can hear when Debbie's talking, there's a lot more movement of the mouth. Then, like when, when Charlie talks and when the girls are talking, it's all that thing that goes out of the back, isn't mm -hmm. it? So, if the new sound of the East End is MLE, what's become of Cockney? Since the end of World War II, many Cockney speakers have been leaving London. We're going to Kent to find the accent we used to hear within the sound of the Bow Bells, the traditional home of Cockney. The most popular thing is the bread pudding, which is made with custard as well. We make it and then pour custard around it. Charlotte is Kent born and raised, but she's grown up surrounded by Cockneys. Where I'm from, on the Isle of Sheppey, there's many people that have brought the London accent over to us. Many people saying words that have come from London, which do catch on. David, Charlotte's accent does sound very much like Cockney, doesn't it? There's TH fronting, so with and month, which is something that London would do. A lot of glottal stops too, but it and so on. Again, all of those things you'd hear in London. With so many Cockneys in Kent, what's happening to the county's traditional accent? The Kent accent is slowly dying out, but John Phillips, who spent his working life as a farm manager, retained some traditional inflections. I worked on the land all my life. During the war, as a schoolboy, I worked on the farm, doing odd jobs, working with horses. I'm hearing a lot of very interesting and unique sounds. The horses, the R is rolled, farm became farm. These are all typical sounds of the Kent Absolutely. accent. What's particularly interesting about John's speech is that all the vowels are in a different place. So what happens to something like Queen? That seems to shorten, that becomes Quinn. We've got to test that out. Who celebrated her Diamond Jubilee last year, John? That was Her Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, of course, was the Queen. And I have met the Queen personally, shaking hands with her. Her Majesty the Queen, as she will now be known. The rise of MLE in East London and the spread of Cockney into Kent is accent evolution in action. This is how accents are changed and created. It's an incredibly exciting time to be exploring accents in this country. So, we're next in Bravier. Yeah? Do you get me? Yeah, man. Good film. Alice is here. Round of applause for Alice. Oh, very popular. Very popular. Everyone. So, Alice.
fascinating film, and we've already talked about this before we came on the air. Is there a blueprint? Is there, you know, is there, if that's a what or a who for MLE, where this MLE comes from? Um, well, it's been happening over a number of years now, but that's the exciting thing, is that it's, it's such a, it's such a fast-spreading accent. Um, but it didn't really come from any one person. I suppose maybe Ali G was the first time we heard that on the media, mm. and people were aware of this phenomenon. Uh, who perhaps didn't live in these areas. And I suppose in terms of sport, you've got somebody like, like Rio Ferdinand, probably is perhaps the most high-profile person who has that, something like that, you know, has that sort of accent <laughs> like that. Um, and maybe Plan B in the world of music uh, has it. But we haven't yet heard it used, you know, in terms of, like, newsreaders or presenters. We're not getting MLE in that sort of uh, area yet. Maybe we will one day. And I mean, Amir Khan is like a melting pot for all of it. He's pretty good to explain what's going on within there, isn't he? Well, yeah, because uh, it's not just a London thing. Obviously, the, uh, the, uh, the ethnic influence is happening in cities around the country, so Glasgow as well, and, and, and places like Bradford and, and Bolton, where Amir Khan, you know, the boxer, if you were listening to him talking, you know, he'll be talking about the way that he fights and that, and you can hear it when he's talking about the way that he fights, you can hear the Bolton, <laughs> but you can also hear the Pakistani as well, so it's, it's a mixture. But it's uh, exciting that this accent is, is happening. Yeah. To the older so generation. Admiring of this man. He's great, isn't he? I can't do accents. <laughs> <laughs> he can help you. By the way, you can, Jeremy, you won yeah. an Oscar, you're fine with that. It's all right. Yeah. I think but it's trouble. almost like Amir Khan doesn't know where he's from, to the older ear, but of course that's not the case at all. No, absolutely not. It's, it's just a, a new thing, and, and as we said in the film, you know, Cockney is being eased out a little bit, but that the Kent accent therefore is being squashed. It's a fascinating to see a geof sort of geographical process. But uh, there's some fascinating features in Old Kent, as the man there, John, in the film displayed. At one point he said Durin, uh, which is something that we call yod dropping. And yod dropping is something that you what do as well, is? Alex. Oh, really? Yes, you drop your yods. Um, That's why she was hired, by the way. We <laughs> <laughs> haven't told her that before. Drop her yod. <laughs> but yes, yod dropping is a very interesting. It's not the sort of thing that a bird watcher would, would uh, necessarily fancy. It right. sounds like it would. I saw some great yod droppings the other day. <laughs> but a yod is the sound, you probably know this, Jeremy, is the y yeah. sound. It's what phonetics uh, people call the y sound. So in Welsh, for instance, you drop your yods all the time. So a word like perpendicular will become perpendicular. So that y yeah is missing in perpendicular, because perpendicular. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hugh Edwards does it all the time on the news. Or, or, or the news, uh, you know, my, Hugh Edwards might say, welcome to the news. So there's that y, <laughs> uh, that y, yod dropping. Yeah. But uh, that doesn't necessarily happen in MLE, which is uh, the accent we were highlighting there. But what about the TH front in? What does that mean? TH front in, we heard that in the film. Uh, that's when TH has become Fs, and that's again is the, uh, the phrase that phoneticists and linguists use uh, for that. So instead of third, you know, you say third. That's TH fronting, so it becomes third. But that happens in both the, the new accent, MLE, and also in traditional Cockney. It took back, yeah, third, he came third, didn't he? But it's the mouth movement which is interesting, that the old Cockney voices, you know, if you're a taxi driver, if I get a taxi home tonight, he'll probably be talking like that, and there's an awful lot of mouth movement going on like that, you know, and someone like Mickey, Mickey Flanagan, who we all know from TV. <laughs> you know, Mickey's from the East End of London. You don't get many people move the mouth more than what Mickey does. That's very uh, Del Boy as well, isn't it? It is. it is, and Mick Jagger as well, similarly. Uh, but, yeah, the Emily... I don't Mick's know if it's a... proper, isn't he, really? Mickey Flanagan or Mick Jagger? No, Mick, Mick Jagger. Yes, proper. but this is the thing of the new accent. I don't know if yeah. it's a teenage thing, whether they move their mouth less, because a lot of people do when they're, you know, teenagers. Are, but young Charlie that you heard in a film there, you know, he, 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 he hardly moves his mouth at all, and that seems to be one of the, the things about it. What, and about then the that thing, what about that thing when all, everything goes up at the end, like the Australians, yes. that all the kids seem yeah. to do now? Yeah, What's that's... That? Uh, well, that absolutely horrifies me. It's, it's yeah. just a rising inflection. Uh, yeah. But I think that's come from American, and, I mean, there are influences in MLE from American as well, a little bit, I suppose, but it's a street accent, which is just four all the time uh, and what's interesting is the words as well the words that they're using it's a dialect as well as an accent and they change the lad in the film there Charlie he said to me uh, he said yeah I use some of the words for like a couple of weeks and I think no nah, that, that doesn't suit me no more that's gone out of fashion <laughs> isn't it? So I don't use that word no more you know but it's always happened, 20s and 30s, you think about it, you know, people would always say, oh, that's jolly good, or it's simply wonderful, it's simply marvellous, oh, that's too, too divine. Absolutely super. Yeah, absolutely super. But in those days, probably Victorian parents or grandparents were thinking, have you heard the way these children talk today? They were that's, horrified. That's, that's, yeah, and similarly, Cockney rhyming slang, you know, that's something now we look back on as very charming. But some parents, like the parent of Charlie there in the film, Debbie, she was very concerned about the way her son talks, what effect it will have maybe on his job opportunities in the future. Um, but Cockney rhyming slang, we look on it as charming, was invented at the time so that people could talk to each other in a slang and in an argo and not be understood by their parents and also by police. You know, a lot of it was criminal activity. They invented these words like apples and stairs, so no one knew what they were talking about. So that in its time had its own, you know, uh, connotations. 
Uh, accents and languages have always been inventive, and this is a very, very exciting right. time. We could listen to you all night about this, and, and we wish you we did. had time. <laughs> just, be, just before we stop. I thought we did. <laughs> well, well, we do, but unfortunately the viewers don't. But um, so just tell us quickly about the evolution of Beckham's confidence through his voice. Oh, well, yeah, there was a thing this week about confidence and uh, about uh, Beckham's accent changing. And, you know, as I said about the teenagers, this might be one of the reasons why this accent is through the back of their mouth. But Beckham, when he started off, you know, he used to talk more like that. And he was, he was a very shy sort of person. And I think what's happened to him uh, recently, it's been picked up on the papers this week, is not that his accent has changed, but he's just matured and he's grown more confident. So when you grow more confident, you, your mouth opens more, you ease up, and so you don't sound <laughs> as shy. Oh. So it's the same voice, it's the same accent, if you like, but it's just gone from being quite tight. So if he gets more confident, yeah, where's he going to end up? He'll end up sounding like Jeremy. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a round of applause for Alistair yeah. McGowan. Yeah. Now, yesterday, Chris here set off in a pink car for a bit of a drive with three of his mates. Alistair, will you give us a clue to who those three were? Uh, well, <clears throat> the first one is uh, he's a judge on uh, another channel, on a, a, a programme about singing. Um, <laughs> and the second one talks about the billions and billions of wonders of the universe and can't help laughing at almost everything <laughs> that he says, you know. And the third one, unlike me, is mad about cars. <laughs> and when I try to do his voice, almost like now, it never gets a laugh. <laughs> Told you. Oh, and Chris was there too.